good day. I am Azara Guyana and I will be discussing the auto cycle. The auto cycle is an ideal process. The mass of air remains constant throughout the thermodynamic cycle. It is a cycle of an engine operation which requires four strokes of the piston for induction, compression, ignition, and exhaust. The fuel and air mixture is compressed before combustion and is started by an electrical spark or either means. This spark ignition causes an explosive release of heat energy which increases the gas pressure in the cylinder forcing the piston outwards as the, as the gas tries to expand. In an ideal auto cycle, the system executing the cycle undergoes a series of four internally reversible processes, namely two isentropic or reversible adiabatic processes alternated with two isometric processes. This is the pressure, volume, and temperature entropy diagram of auto cycle. As seen in both diagrams, step one to step two is an isentropic compression, two to three is, is isometric, which is the constant volume heat addition, three to four is an isentropic expansion and 4 to 1 is isometric which is the constant volume heat rejection. In the pressure volume diagram, the volume is constant, heat is introduced in step 2 to step 3 and is rejected at step 4 to step 1. Same goes with the temperature volume diagram. Here is a sample, uh, sample problem of this topic. An auto cycle with a compression ratio of 7.5 operates from the suction conditions of 97.91 kilopascals at 29.4 degrees Celsius. Find the pressure and temperature at the end of compression. A. If cold air is the working substance. B. If hot air is the working substance. And C. Solve for the ideal thermal efficiency based upon the conditions given in A and B. Before proceeding to the solution of the problem, we must declare the assumptions. So the assumptions for this problem are the air standard assumptions are applicable, air is an ideal gas, kinetic and potential energy are negligible, and air is an ideal gas with constant specific heats. In this problem, we will be using the PV diagram. These are the given that are stated already in the problem. So the compression ratio is 7.5. The suction pressure, which is P1, is equal to 97.91 kilopascals. The suction temperature, which is T1, is equal to 29.4 degrees Celsius. And converted to Kelvin is, we must add 273. So 29.4 degrees Celsius plus 273 equals to 302.4 Kelvin. So in this problem, we must find and identify the pressure and temperature at the end of compression. So in letter A, we must find the temperature. So letter A is the working substance is the cold air. So T2 over T1 equals to RC, which is the compression ratio raised to K minus 1, which is which K is the specific heat ratio. So substitute the values, seven, the compression ratio is 7.5 raised to K, which is 1.4 minus 1, so 7.5 raised to 1.4 minus 1 is 2.24. Then we substitute the value of T1, which is already given in the problem, which is 302.4. So T2 over 302.4 equals to 2.24. So we multiply both sides by 302.4 so that T2 will remain in the first equation. So it will become T2 equals to 2.24 times 302.4. So which equals to 677.34 Kelvin. So to convert this into Celsius, we must, we must sub subtract 273. So 677.34 Kelvin minus 273 is 404.34 degrees Celsius. So using standard cold air, the temperature at the end of compression is 404.34 degrees Celsius. Same goes to find the pressure. Uh, as cold air as the working substance so we have p2 over p1 equals to rc raised to k again substitute the value 7.5 raised to 1.4 is 16.79 then substitute the p1 or the suction pressure which is already given the problem which is 97.91 kilopascals so p2 is equals to 16.79 times 97.91 kilopascals which is 1644 so using cold air, the pressure at the end of compression is 
1,644 kPa. Next, if hot air is the working substance, we will use the same formulas a while ago. So again, T2 over T1 equals to RC or the compression ratio, which raised to K minus 1. However, in hot air, instead of 1.4, which is used for the cold air, for hot air, we will use 1.32 as a specific heat, heat ratio. So again, 7.5 raised to 1.32 minus 1 is 1.9055. Then substitute again the value for T1, which is 302.4. Then multiply again both sides so that T2 will remain in the first equation. Then T2 is equal to 1.9055 times 302.4, which is 576.24 Kelvin. Then to convert it to Celsius, we must multiply, uh, we must subtract 273. So it will become 33.24 degrees Celsius. Using standard hot air, the temperature at the end of compression is 303.24 degrees Celsius. Same goes with the pressure. Substitute again the value. 7.5 raised to 1.32 is 14.29. Substitute the value of P1 so that we can get the value of P2. So P2 is equal to 14.29 times 97.91 kilopascals. When we multiply the, both the values, we will get pressure as is 1,400 kilopascals. So using standard hot air, the pressure at the end of compression is 1,400 kilopascals. For letter C is we need to solve for the ideal thermal efficiency based upon the conditions given in A and B. So the formula for the efficiency of auto cycle is equals to 1 minus 1 over the compression race, ratio raised to K minus 1. So for the efficiency of auto cycle for cold air, we have 1 minus 1 over 7.5 raised to 1.4 minus 1 equals to 0 0.5533 times 100 to get the percentage value, which is 55.33%. Therefore, the efficiency of auto cycle for cold air in this problem is 55.33%. Whereas for the efficiency of auto cycle for hot air, we have 1 minus 1 over 7.5 raised to 1.32 minus 1 which is 0 0.4752 and again multiply it with 100 to get the percentage value we have 47.52 percent thus the efficiency of auto cycle for hot air is 47.52 percent here is another problem for this topic an engine operating on auto cycle has a compression ratio of 8 is to 1 at the beginning of the compression stroke, the air is at 103.5 kN per cubic meter and 300 Kelvin. If the heat applied, applied is 922 kJ per kilogram of air, calculate the maximum pressure and temperature in the cycle and the efficiency. So again, we must declare first the assumptions before proceeding to the solution of the problem. The assumptions for this problem are the air standard assumptions are applicable, air is an ideal gas, kinetic and potential energy are negligible, and air is an ideal gas with constant specific heats. So we must assume the specific heat constant specific heat at constant volume, which is 0 0.718 kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin, and this is the ratio, which is specific heat ratio, which is 1.4. And again, in this problem, we will be using the PV diagram. So as seen in the di diagram, the heat is introduced at state 2 to state 3 and will be rejected at state, one to state, one, state 4 to 1. The given, which are already stated in the problem, so we have the compression ratio, which is R is equal to 8 is to 1. The initial pressure, which is P1, which is equal to 103.5 kilonewtons per cube per square meter and the initial temperature which is T1 is 300 Kelvin and the heat supplied which is Q1 is 920 kilojoules per kilograms of air. The first thing to do in this problem is to find the maximum temperature considering the adiabatic compression process, process at state 1 to state 2. So T2 over T1 is equal to the compression ratio raised to the specific heat ratio minus 1. 
So, substitute the values. We will have 8 raised to 1.4 minus 1 is 2.297. Then, we substitute the value of T1, which is 300 Kelvin, which is already given in the problem. So, we will multiply both sides by 300. So it will be cancelled, then T2 will remain in the first equation. So T2 will become 2.297 times 300, which will become 689.1 Kelvin, minus 273 to convert it to Celsius. We have the value of temperature at state 2, which is 416.1 degrees Celsius. So to find the maximum temperature in the cycle, we will use the formula of heat supplied so heat is q1 is equals to m cv or the cv is a specific heat at constant volume multiplied by the temperature at state 3 minus the temperature at state 2 so we will substitute the values of q which is already given in the problem which is 120 kilojoules per kilograms of air equals to 1 times the specific heat at constant volume and again it was already assumed in the problem which is 0 0.718 multiplied by the temperature at state 3 which is the missing minus 689.2 which was solved in the first which in the slide before this so uh, t3 t t is equals to 1170.5 kelvin after obtaining Next is the maximum to temperature, find the maximum we pressure. will continue so to find the, the maximum pressure problem. Considering and you again must consider the process, the process at state, at one, to state, state one to state two. two. So we will use the we same formula use that is used the, in the first problem, formula, which is P2 over P1 problem. equals to the compression ratio. Pressure, pressure at to state K. two, we have P2 then substitute again the values. Over P1, 8 raised to 1.4 is 18.379 ratio minus 1. Then substitute again the values for P1, which is 103.5. Then Next is to is find 2. the maximum pressure times so 300 the step in this problem. Therefore, and we must consider the, the maximum process pressure at state one is state two. equal. We already equals used to the 1000. This formula a while ago our first problem. So per to get the meter. pressure at state two, we have P two. Next is now we consider the process at state two to state three. We need to find the pressure at state three. We equate. P2 over T2 equals to P3 over T3. Since then, since we were we are finding the value at pressure at state 3, we need to equate the equation in order to, for us to find P3. So it will become P3 equals to P2 over T2 times the temperature at T3. Times the temperature at state 3 or T3. Then substitute the values. We have P2 is equal to 1,102.24 over the T2, which is 689.2, multiplied by T3, which is 1,170.5. Then if we solve that, we will get the, we will get the pressure at state 3, which is 5,438.7 kilonewtons per square meter. Lastly, we need to solve for the thermal efficiency. So the efficiency of auto cycle is equals to 1 minus 1 over the compression ratio multiply raised to K, which is the specific heat ratio, minus 1. So substitute the values. We will get 1 minus 1 over 8 raised to 1.4 minus 1 equals to 0.5647 times 100, which is 57, 56.47%. Therefore, the thermal efficiency of all the cycle in this problem is 56.47%.